Home buyers' tastes and their preferences vary widely, but nearly all buyers have a couple things in common the same worries and concerns. To discuss those concerns and how to avoid them, we choose real estate expert Denny Grimes is here with us. So we appreciate you coming in. Always good advice. So, what, what are we worried about here? I can take a guess. Well, what would your guess be? It's going to do a bit with price. Something well, to do with price is going to be on the top of everybody's mind. That's right. We have literally tens of thousands of transactions every year in Southwest Florida, and there's a lot of things that are on people's mind, but the number one concern people have is overpaying. Makes sense. And our market is moving so fast, people step into this market and they see it just, things are flying off the shelf and they're really afraid of overpaying. So there's a, a couple of rules that we can follow, simple things to, uh, to figure out if the asking price is within range or not. Okay. Now they can hire an appraisal or ask the listing agent how they came up with the number or even ask the seller what, what their bottom line is. But that is all good stuff, takes a little bit of time, it may not be trustworthy. But one thing that is trustworthy is the market. So if, this, if the buyer would ask the market how they do that, they basically say and find out how long the home has been active. That's a key question because as fast as this market's moving, if it's been on the market for two weeks and it has not sold, that tells us one thing. You know what that is? The price is wrong? Well, the price is at least it's not a steal. It's not a steal. Okay. You know, they, they say there's a saying in real estate, you never steal in slow motion. So basically the good buyers are gone in hours, if not days. So if it's been on the market two weeks, it may not mean it's right, uh, rightly priced and it may not be wrong, but it's just not a steal. Okay. The second part of that question, though, is how long has it been on the market at that price? Because a seller may have started at 300000 and just all of a sudden got motivated, realistic, or won the lottery. They want to get rid of the home, and just last night they lowered it to two fifty. Uh -huh. So basically, well, if that price has been there only for a couple of days or less than two weeks, it, the same rules apply. If it's been on the market, and this is in most price ranges, for more than two weeks, chances are if you want to step in and make an offer, though, the seller may entertain an offer less than the initial asking price. Hmm, all right, so that's 14 days is a big milestone, right, and the way this market is going. That's right, and, and that's on the sweet spot. You know, the luxury market's different. I'm just talking about stuff under 300 in Lee, uh, in Lee County, under 600 in Collier. Okay, now what's the other concern we have? It's the going back to the old money pit movie. They're afraid they're going to buy something and have all these problems that, that would, you know, form. So the way you want to avoid that is ask for ask the, for a current seller's disclosure or a seller's disclosure and then look at the date. That's what most people don't do because it may have been filled out months ago and since then you know they've discovered a problem the water heater broke and it's leaked and it's caused all these problems whatever that you can't see necessarily. The other thing you want to ask, the second question Rob is has there been a home inspection since the seller's disclosure was filled out because an offer may have come through, the offer fell apart, now the seller has discovered issues that they didn't even know about and they have not updated the seller's disclosure. Mm -hmm. So those are a couple of que key questions you can ask going in to avoid the money pit issue. Yeah, you don't want that house then it just bleeds you dry once you've moved in. Right, or even, you know, there's inspections and you can go through to, to avoid it once you go under contract, but why waste time on a home that's gonna have problems unexpectedly? And you know, unexpected issues are not fun in real estate. No, they're not. Good advice as always, Denny. Thanks for coming in. Wink News this morning, I'll be right back.